pitch the free state project to somebody. Just, just visit. Like you go on vacation, right? Like you sometimes leave wherever you are. Like just come and visit. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello. Thank you for tuning into the Freckles and Brit show. I'm Brit and this is my beautiful co-host Freckles in what I'm assuming is a bear onesie. So <laughs> it is. It is. Just gonna... I think should the bear onesie be uh what what introduces us to your background this week? I guess. I mean, if if we want to connect the two, I don't know if we want to go there, but anyway. <laughs> always has been mean and then it's hollywood and it says wait it's all it's shit it's all pedophiles that's what it says see i can't see it so just i don't know <laughs> but yeah that's that's what it is Ta-da! <laughs> hollywood always has been oh wait it's all pedophiles that is um sad and scary because i lived maybe five miles from that sign for the last 20 years so um, uh, before we get started you guys if you're tuning in please hit the subscribe button um, we really appreciate it we want all of the likes just smash the button just do it and then you don't even have to watch a show just hit the button let's be honest about the situation here guys so uh, our guest today thank you so much for joining us as Jeremy Kaufman he is from the Free State Project. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And we've already started off right by, you know, talking about uh, states and, and where people should be living, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty excited about this because living on the left coast in California, um, I am like a one woman uh, bandwagon for every, like, free thinking person, every liberty minded person to move to California and push all the, the crazies out. But it seems I'm losing that battle. Like never, never going to happen. Yeah, never never. Gonna happen. Fre Fre Freckles has a chance. Maybe uh, Cal California is lost. Uh, and, and you know, what I'm excited to talk about today is uh, how we can, how we can really win uh, and how we can enjoy ourselves doing it. I would, I would suggest as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, or a lot of it, that's what you're here for, about the Free State Project. Yeah, so the, the Free State Project is a movement to concentrate libertarians in a single uh, region, uh, the, the region being New Hampshire. Uh, it was, that, that region was chosen um, by approximately 20,000 libertarians uh, who have uh, promised to move to New Hampshire. There are 6,000 libertarians who have moved uh, already, and there are uh, hundreds, uh, hundreds more um, you know, coming on the regular, uh, every, you know, every month we have a party and there's, there's more libertarians here. Uh, you know, and the, the idea is to so the, you know, the sort of, there's this strategic, uh, minded part of it. And then there's the sort of like lived experience of doing it. And, you know, the strategic minded is, is the idea. And these are more my words than the, than the organizations, but that, um, you know, if, um, um, if we concentrate, we can be that much more politically, uh, effective, um, and, uh, you know, it's the only way that it's, it's really the only way um, people have been able to do something new is by sort of like concentrating and, and saying we deserve to be able to live, uh, you know, live this certain way. Um, and it's also a really interesting way to live. You know, you, I've, I, I moved here from Philadelphia about five years ago and I didn't realize how different it would be to live in like a community and around people who are who are predominantly libertarian. I'm not saying every person on the street, but you know, you're embedded in this larger community. If you want to see nothing but libertarians, which uh, you know, you could do that. There's, there's libertarian schools, you know, there's uh, there's libertarian everything. You know, you can't go to the supermarket without running into a libertarian. Um, that actually, that sounds very nice. It would be nice to uh, live in an area at the very least that doesn't, Ha that doesn't feel like every person around me is an enemy and I have to keep my voice quiet because I disagree with half of what they say. It's not yeah. like I'm even like a conservative, but in California, if you're not a staunch liberal, then people are aggressive and angry. I mean, you've they, never seen so many white women in yoga pants that will attack <laughs> you. So. I mean, they, they, they really are. I was not a politically active libertarian 
um, before I moved here. I wasn't embedded. I wasn't a you know libertarian. Was, I was a libertarian in my head, but I wasn't a libertarian as you know part of my life. Uh, you know, and I lived in Philadelphia and was generally embedded in a predominantly progressive, you know, sort of community. And I didn't even realize until I moved here the sort of like you know weight that pushes on you a little bit of like you know constantly biting your tongue or like constantly being careful about the way that you like phrase or or present things you know we get acclimated you can get acclimated to anything you know you, you have a thorn in your side and it's been there for five years you know it's still there but you kind of start to forget about it and then it gets removed and you're like wow that feel this feels so much better you know um and i really felt that way after moving here um there's kind of this ideal among libertarians that if we could just get the word out to people that they'll, they'll come around to our, our point of view. Um, I would say the free state project seems to have the opposite view of that. And I'm starting to have the opposite view of that because no matter how nice I am, no matter, I mean, I could be in a mom group with women for, but I was in a mom group with women for years that thought that I was nice. They told me constantly, it was one of the sweetest people they ever met. And they found out that um, I voted for Gary Johnson the day after the election. And they actually, it, I, they all but kicked me out of this group. And all of a sudden I was the enemy. It's because I didn't vote for Hillary. And that to me is, is scary. And it's, it, it makes you really think like that there's a lot of brainwashing going on with people. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it really is scary. And I think libertarians have, and I was completely this way myself for, for a long time because we generally are the kinds of people who consider things, you know, who look at arguments and evidence and like are willing to like think things through on our own. We want everyone else to be that way. And the truth is that like a lot of people aren't. Uh, and I think current current events and everything going on right now is a great example of this, where like a lot of people um, aren't either aren't capable or aren't aren't willing of doing this. And this this idea that we're gonna like reason people into being libertarians or evidence them into being libertarians, I think at a certain point you have to admit that this is uh, this is not this doesn't work. Like it's a fine idea in, in theory, but just like empirically, it doesn't work. It's not working. And so instead, if you go, well, there are enough libertarians, there are millions of people who believe in the idea of libertarianism. And, and also, I want to also say this argument that I'm about to give. Progressives actually are receptive to this argument. Almost everyone is receptive to this argument. You know, you're, you're arguing about whether libertarianism is correct or not. You're attacking someone's identity and you're making them question who they are as a person. And people are going to put shields up to that, right? But if you say, hey, look, this is who I am as a person. I want to live this way. I want to live this way in which the state is not, is not controlling so much of my life and my child and the way I raise my children and all these things. And that's just, that's what I want for myself. And if there are millions of us who want that for ourselves, shouldn't we be allowed to have that? Right. You know, cause look, you, if, if communists gave me that argument, I'd buy it. Right. And I'm not a communist, but I think a million communists, if a million communists want to live somewhere very far away from me and go be crazy communists, like that doesn't bother me, right? Uh, and so similarly, you know, people who might be very negative to libertarianism, if you say, well, like, look, you know, instead of it being this correct thing, it's like, look, I like chocolate, you like vanilla. This is, you know, this is just what I like. You know, um, people, are, people are much more receptive to that when they feel, than when they, you know, take it as, a, as like, um, as, as you're, you're disagreeing on this fundamental aspect of, of morality or right and wrong. Can I ask why New Hampshire was picked? as that's where the libertarians were going to congregate. <laughs> yeah. So there were, uh, I actually was not a part of the organization when the uh, state was, uh, was picked. Um, but the people who were part of it at, at the time voted and chose it. The criteria, some of the criteria they looked for was um, small enough. So population under a certain size, uh, New Hampshire's population is 1.1.2 million. Um, uh, in sort of in, innate, how innately close they were to libertarianism already, right? So how, how libertarian was the existing state? How libertarian inclined was the populace? And libertarian, uh, New Hampshire, by the way, is very libertarian. Uh, it's, it consistently ranks as either the first or the second most libertarian state uh, in the country, uh, but you know, when ranked by like Cato and other organizations. And I'll tell you that living here as well, there's very much just a live and let live attitude, even if people you know, wouldn't describe themselves as libertarians explicitly, like it definitely is 
among the people. You know, there's a, there's a gun culture. Ron Paul was super popular. There's a sort of like, you know, it's not like New Hampshire is very different from Vermont, you know, Massachusetts and Maine. And so if you're someone who is not familiar with the intricacies of the region, like do not lump New Hampshire in with, you know, the way you would think of, of Massachusetts or Vermont or these kinds of places. Um, um, uh, so uh, what were some of the other criteria? I mean, just like kind of, could, you know, could it be strategically successful? How nice was it live to, to live there? You know, so like uh, Wyoming, I believe, was number two and Alaska was number three. You know, so these were the other states how, how, when, the, when the original, uh, you know, choosing happened. And one of the reasons New Hampshire won out against those was like, you, you're still in a major metro area. If I live in southern New Hampshire, I am in the Boston metro, you know, so you're connected to, in terms of like high tech jobs, you know, these kinds of things. Um, you know, airports, easy travel compared to something like a Wyoming or, or in Alaska. Um, do you feel living there now and having this different kind of political climate that it, it's actually less, um, I, I guess, well, I would think it would be less stress, but less political constantly. Uh, just as an example, like I said, being in Los Angeles, I constantly feel like that's always the elephant in the room and when people start to talk about politics i'm always picking my battles am i going to be quiet am i going to say something how am i not going to enrage my extremely leftist in-laws like how um do you feel just living in a different area that it kind of frees you up not to just have to feel that burden all the time yeah i mean between uh my my work and my community here i don't i don't feel it at all I, i'm not going to pretend that you couldn't feel it anywhere they're gonna they're still there's still progressive cultures within the state, you know, so that you could have certain jobs or be in a certain community where you might still feel it. Um, but I think like in general, you're not going to feel it only in a small number of cities in the state. Would you probably feel it um, in terms of just sort of being around you? Uh, you know, New, New Hampshire is, is pretty purple and somewhat anti-establishment uh, as much as a state can ever be anti-establishment on the whole you know like it's it's skeptical of things um so you're not it's it's tough to i very rarely see get the feeling that there's just like complete group thing you know in in yeah. one area or place yeah so and if you go work at you know npr you know i'm sure there's <laughs> yeah <laughs> But you're not going to be at a barbecue, most likely, and someone screaming at your face. No, if no. You, if you don't love Joe Biden, you're supporting Trump. And if you're, you know, or, or vice versa, depending on where you are in the country. None of that. None of that. It, uh, that, sounds, that sounds amazing. I'm ready to pack my bags at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, my well, the, the thing that I, I would say is, like, if you're, if you're remotely interested in this idea the number one you don't have to i mean i'm not trying to ruin a, a potential sale here because we want to we want to have you but just come out and 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 visit um we have a whole program where we'll like help you you know help you meet people help you plan a trip uh at fsp.org uh slash uh slash visit or slash visit nh probably both of them I'll our web guy is good like that uh because if I, we make a mistake he's just like i'll just add it you know so <laughs> if it's not at one of those pages at both of them it will be soon i'll put them uh, all and, <laughs> i'll just look it all up yeah yeah but we'll we'll, we'll help you uh we'll help you plan a trip i'll help, i'll help you personally plan a trip for anyone listening to this you can email me directly and I, i'll help you uh i'll help you plan a trip um sure. we uh there's also two major events uh well there's like three or four major events but pork fest is the biggest one although it just happened um, if, if you've heard of Pork me. Fest, it's a it's a sort of uh, outdoor libertarian festival uh, that goes on for almost a full week, and it still happened this year. We had it. Every other libertarian event got canceled. If you want to know how free staters roll, uh, <laughs> we we had our Pork Fest uh, that was uh, this my year. Question: I know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a uh, normally it starts it kicks off on my birthday, June twenty second, or it did this year at least. So. I was I was gonna ask if it still went on. I know everything else in in the world has pretty much been canceled, but so I mean that's amazing that you guys are still able to. It, pull it, it did, out. and uh, Tom Tom Woods and Jeffrey Tucker uh, were both very very enthusiastic fans of it. As were the, I think we had a little over a thousand people this year. Uh, so attendance a little a little down due to not not that surprisingly, but yeah, uh, yeah it was great. I think for a lot of people, it was, especially, you know, we had some people come from pretty far away who, you know, had some stories of what it was like, you know, in their state. I understand California's uh, uh, pretty bad, especially if you're in LA. Um, 
uh, you know, we never had, we had a, we had a brief um, sort of ha- ha- half-assed kind of lockdown. Um, and that's it. You know, there's, that's, that's really the only thing the state ever did. And New Hampshire's done really well. So yeah. I want to ask, since we're kind of on that vein, like about the masks, because yeah. Freckles and I think have not different views. We both are very adamant that people shouldn't be forced to wear masks. But um, I am a person that I will put a mask on. I will put two masks on. I will put gloves on. I sanitize. Nothing comes in my house until it's been sitting in the garage for three days. I bought an extra freezer um, because I have a son with type 1 diabetes. I'm terrified of COVID. Yeah. However, I don't think my lifestyle and what I choose, should, anybody else should have to do that. In fact, I wouldn't be doing that if I wasn't concerned about my son. But it seems that the whole idea of masks has been extremely politicized. So if I wear a mask um, in LA, it's not a big deal. Where I live is, is pretty red. And a lot of people think that a lot of people don't wear them. I also don't care if they don't wear them. No one's going to say anything in my town probably. Um, but somebody in my town actually might likely tell you, you know, like, it's a hoax, it's this, it's all that. What's the climate there? Yeah, in, in the state or among free staters or both? About, well, no, just in the state, in the, okay. among the free staters there. Sure, in the state, it's, um, well, like, like in California, it probably is going to go a little bit town by town. I believe a couple of towns do have mask uh, ordinances. The vast majority do not. And the towns that do would be like the, you know, like, uh, like I think something like Durham or other seacoast towns that are, you know, centered around the, co- uh, or upstate uh, centered around the college. Um, the, uh, definitely the, I mean, I think pretty much everyone, yeah, and especially among free staters, you know, no, very, very few, if any, are saying, you know, violate property rights. Like, the, you know, it doesn't really matter if someone says, if someone says wear a mask, you know, you should wear, uh, you know, you should wear a mask. I think that opinion is the predominant opinion with it, you know, with everyone, there's not that many people, um, sort of clamoring for mask laws, but you're, you're still going to have that population, right? The difference is that here it's, you know, may, you know, maybe 25% when somewhere else, some other place it's 50%. Um, but I, you know, it's also New Hampshire's done really well. The, the cases in New Hampshire are almost all in the healthcare system, uh, or in care homes. And there's only currently there's something like 400 300 active cases in the entire state at least that are known you know so in the city that i live in which is manchester the largest state like people are definitely wearing them um in stores and so on uh um but like restaurants are open and and even bars are open um so and and people are like if i walk downtown most most people wouldn't have them on outside maybe half the people would have them on inside um but no laws um, it sounds like you could correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like the overall vibe is much easier. It's just easier to live there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew the thing is like New Hampshire does have that sort of, it's a, it, it does have that sort of, um, Puritan inspired, like people are conscientious and responsible, you know, to a degree and like I, you know, much more than, than any other, uh, uh, any other place I've, I've lived, I feel much, you know, much more that way in terms of, you know, people sort of just generally having that attitude of like looking out for their neighbor and looking out for their, their town, you know, and people want to do good and, you know, do right by others. I think that that's like a pretty, pretty common, common sentiment among people here. That seems extremely different from the view of Liberty, or the view that's put on Liberty minded people, especially on Twitter. Um, I know for myself, I, 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 I'm, I'm one of those people that just, we always have like a cause or something that we're trying to do. I don't expect anyone else to do it, but just kind of as a liberty minded person, I think like, I don't want the state taking care of things and where I can help, I will. Um, because some people can't handle, some people can't, you know, pick up the pieces in certain areas. So I don't mind helping. Um, that seems like the kind of vibe I'm getting, like just a more community um, oriented vibe where people are just kind of willing to help. They're not forced to, but they just kind of want to. It just. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think there's a lot of that. And um, although among, among, you know, look, there, there's again, 5,500, 6,000 free staters in the state, you know, and 
six thousand libertarians means you get seven thousand different libertarian opinions. You know, so you're gonna if you have any particular, you know, they're mutualists, they're agorists, there are left libertarian, you know, uh, hippie types. You've got more, you know, uh, you know, right, right libertarian, uh, you know more cultural, cultural conservative. Not, and I don't mean to put people in boxes because again, what I'm trying to say is you get every, every different type along every different, different axis. And that's kind of the point though, right? Just yeah. Yeah. Yes. Your- right. We're all, we're all on the same team. Yeah. yeah. We're all on and the same team. Yeah. There's another, there's a view that I, I don't know. Maybe you could speak to a little bit um, that it's not, a great idea for people that are libertarian or someone like me, liberty minded to live in a state like California, because I'm not just living here trying to deal with a very like leftist attitude. I'm also contributing to um, like the voting block when even it doesn't matter how I vote, my vote is going to always go for a Nancy Pelosi or a Joe Biden, that type of thing, because I'm lumped in with them. So it actually hurts the liberty movement for me to be in a blue state is that kind of is that true is that just a, a theory you know, i don't know uh, <laughs> i've been on, on a lot of things you know what i have never been someone uh, who paid um a ton of attention to, to national politics i'm probably paying to, a little t- more to it now um but even here like most of the focus is on state politics rather than national politics because of this part of the core thesis is like we can actually be effective at the state level, right? Yeah. And and have been. Uh, we were key. We got constitutional carry passed just last year, and there were you know twenty free staters involved in making that happen. Um, well, probably more than twenty when you factor in yeah. at large. There are twenty just you know that that, that voted on the bill. Um, so I don't think you know. I'll say this. Maybe I'm again. I'm hurting hurting the the pitch here, but I don't think you should feel guilty ever about like you about what political outcomes like. Because that's kind of the whole point is, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, for the most part, have to be responsible for these things, right? It's a mistake to be trying to solve these problems through government or through the state in the first place, you know? And I don't think there's this whole, like, this whole, like, um, Walt, Walter Block has this, like, thought experiment that I'm a big fan of. And it's, like, basically, like, you know, I don't even, I don't even want to get into it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be responsible. You shouldn't feel, you shouldn't feel responsible. If you voted for the right thing, like, you did the right thing. I don't think you're obligated to move somewhere to make your vote work more. Like I, w- I would rather say that like you should move here because, uh, you know, uh, we we can actually be effective and it feels really good to to live around libertarians and is beneficial, right? You know, like I I have I have kids, you have kids, anyone with kids. You know, one of the biggest impacts that you have a parent, if not the biggest, I think, is what is the culture in which your children are being you know, raised in, exposed to, because, you know, they're not in your, and especially as they get older, they're not in your house all the time, you know, so what's going to be seeping into their, their life? Who are they going to be learning from? Who are they going to be copying? Who are they going to be inspired by? Yeah. Um, you know, and being, the, the culture here is incredible. You know, like I can, I can send my son to, to archery lessons, to ukulele lessons, to computer programming classes, to econ classes, like all, uh, th- there's this really cool group called uh, Latitude Learning, uh, which anyone with, with kids should be Googling and, and, and checking out. And this is just like one example of many of this like incredible network of liberty-minded people, you know, who've created this, this really positive community. And my kids go up to the farm, uh, Upstate Farm, every Friday. And, you know, get, get to visit someone's farm and learn about all the animals, you know, and, and all this stuff. And it's just like, it's really, it's really incredible, uh, I think, for, uh, for anyone with family. That, that sounds amazing. We just put, uh, I just registered my son for homeschool. He was in a, like a Reggio Emilia type preschool, which is, it's child led, but it's real world application. So if they want to cut down a tree, you give them an ax and supervise them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Type situation. And then we decided, I decided rather naively that I would put him in public school for kindergarten thinking I will be there and I can kind of change a system because we're a smaller school district. One of the things that I realized though in a public school district is that they have no problem taking taxpayer money and getting more money for a child that has a disability and 
not giving it to that kid to use. I mean, I realize this is not, this is not a fight that I'm willing to fight and not, not put my, not, not to put my kid's life on the line and his education. So we signed him up for homeschool, um, literally the week before the, the shutdown. So they said, you know, we're not taking anyone else. Um, but the school had all the kids do distance learning. And even though I was in the classroom one day a week and at the school a lot, um, I didn't realize the huge gaps in education and what's being taught is not necessarily what I would want him to learn. I wouldn't, I don't, you know, just for, as a parent, I don't think a five-year-old should be doing more paperwork than a administrative assistant in an office. It's, it's, it was really eye-opening. And so once we signed him up this year and I was talking with one of the homeschool teachers and all the parenting groups, I realized this is where all the liberty-minded people in California are. They've all pulled their kids out of yeah. school. And it's crazy. There's parents that are completely different views than mine. And we all get along just fine. We all get along just fine because we all have the same kind of idea that everybody just thinks differently and feels differently about things. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, so like the same kind of sentiment exists here. Uh, it, it's just probably more people. Yeah, yeah. You, you could, you know, the, the, there's a Facebook group, uh, Granite State Home Educators, which I think it's okay to join if you don't uh, live here, maybe politely like read the rules and make sure it's okay if you yeah. join, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure they're cool with having like sort of Granite State curious people um, pop in. And it's, uh, it's, it's one, it's, it's just another example that you can go in and observe, you know, thousands of people in this group, you know, people ask questions, people say they're doing this, people post, you know, schedules or you know this is this is going on and, and these various things my my kids aren't quite old enough for this yet so i'm not deeply embedded in this community but i've sort of begun learning because they're approaching the age where they'll, yeah they'll it happens involved, way faster than any parent probably ever wants it to <laughs> yeah, it does happen, yeah. and then like the next minute they're in kindergarten and you're like oh my gosh they're gonna get married and leave and i'm not gonna see them but that's like a whole nother Oh, yeah, God. that's my, uh, uh, it's my son's, my son turned three today. Oh, uh, happy yeah. birthday to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's great. <laughs> um, I want to, can we change the subject yeah. a little bit and switch over to uh, your other project, uh, sure. library? Can you, yeah. I'm interested in this. I know that's not why we had you on, but it's, it's really interesting. I really want you to tell us about it. I really think that the, you know, our, our I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to talk about it and I'll, I'm sure I can manage to shill for the free state project at the, at the same time. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dynamic enough. Uh, so uh, I am the CEO of a company called uh, library LBRY, which you can check out at LBRY.tv or .com. And what library is, well, we're, we're basically trying to make YouTube uh, possible, uh, but sort of without the Google. Uh, and, and by that, what I mean is we're trying to take, to provide that same level of sort of user experience, of, uh, but via an entire uh, open sort of decentralized technology. Uh, so something with the properties of, of Bitcoin or email in terms of it being decentralized, not easily censored, not easily controlled, but from a user experience, you know, basically just like YouTube, right? Like, uh, or, or similar things. Um, it's uh, companies existed for, for several years. Uh, it's been growing in popularity quite a bit. Uh, more than 4 million people uh, use library uh, in the last uh, month. Uh, and there's some really big uh, YouTubers and, and creators uh, who have adopted it. I think we've got like 60 uh, X or current YouTubers uh, with a million or more subscribers uh, publishing onto, onto library. It's really big. There's like 4 million pieces of things, uh, 4 million pieces of content on there. So you can, you can find all kinds of videos on there. Girls, we um, should things. be on there. <laughs> yeah, you guys should be on there. Uh, you can use uh, library.com slash YouTube uh, to copy uh, all of your content uh, over from your, from your YouTube channel. Uh, so we make it easy, uh, easy to, to get started as well. And uh, yeah, that's what I spend most of my time on. Free State Project is a, is a, is a side gig. I'm a volunteer. Uh, I'm on the board of directors, and it's something I, I care a lot about. But, you know, library is what I uh, obsess over. So, yeah. Uh, it sounds great. I'm actually going to check this out more today. I, 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 Freckles and I uh, are actually talking about kind of moving in that direction. So 
we're we're starting to to branch out beyond you know just Twitter and YouTube. So this might actually be a really great thing for us. I it, it looks really great, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to to talk about it a little. I know that's not what you were here for, and I know it was super selfish, but I am a super. Oh, it's it's uh, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm happy to talk about it. And I'll say also for anyone who's into this kind of stuff, uh, you know, blockchain uh, tech or just entrepreneurship, um, there's a there's a great scene for that here. Uh, you're in my office. I work out of, I, I work with a couple of other people from library. I work with the executive director of the Free State Project. I work with um, the chief of staff from Morning Star, which is like a libertarian tomato company that sells half the tomatoes in the world or the states or something like that. Uh, <laughs> and the, um, I think technically now former chair of the Libertarian Party. You know, so we've got a little, uh, a little like libertarian sort of co working space slash office. There's stuff like this uh, in the seacoast. There's so many people in tech. We have the longest running Bitcoin meetup in the world uh, going on like seven years. It's been continuously running. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a great scene for that kind of stuff. Oh, I think I, I mentioned that people could email me, but I didn't give it out. So if anyone, uh, seriously, I'm happy to talk to people personally because um, to me, that's, uh, it makes it easier to just figure stuff yeah. out. Uh, so K-A-U-F-F-J at Gmail. That's just my personal email. Uh, but you're welcome. If you're a perspective mover, or interested in any of this stuff, I'm happy to, to talk to you personally. Um, you can also correspond directly with the Free State Project. Um, we have people who will you know, um, uh, uh, talk to you or, uh, or answer any, any of your questions. Uh, Jeremy, before we go, is there anything else that you want to let people kind of know that you think that everyone, like it, just the one thing that if, if you were trying to pitch the Free State Project to somebody. Just, just visit. Like, you go on vacation, right? Like, you sometimes leave wherever you are. <laughs> like, just go and visit, <laughs> okay? That's, like, you can spend, you can nerd out online and check it out. But, like, I, I think that it's one of these things where it's so much uh, better to just come and check it out in, in person. Um, and do reach out to us because we'll have someone, you know, we, we have people, you, you can tell us, oh, like whatever, even just the kind of, like there's a free state thing for everything, right? Like I, uh, if there are free state knitters, they are free state board gamers. There's a board game uh, cafe downstairs. It's, or, sorry, not downstairs, down, down the street. It's owned by a free stater. Like there's a free state, you know, obviously there's, there's free staters who are into camping. There's free staters who are into every, anything that you could think of, there's some kind of group, right? So it's like, if you come and you say, hey, these are some of my hobbies, you know, uh, or whatever, or even if it's not a free state thing, right? Um, I play, I'm, I, I uh, used to play uh, competitive ultimate frisbee. And, uh, you know, I, I, they help me get plugged into the scene. It's not full of free staters, but, you know, there are people who know everything about the state. So if you want to come and, and check it out, just come and check it out. Come and talk to us. It's a great place to vacation. Um, things are open here. You could come on vacation right now. Come next week. Come in two weeks. Uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful in, uh, in September and October. And so I just really can't encourage enough people to just come and visit. Uh, thank you so much. I'm definitely going to try and talk my husband into coming to visit. We're looking for somewhere to move that uh, we can raise our kids and he can still fly back into Los Angeles because he's in the movie industry. So, uh, but uh, we're definitely going to come and visit soon. I'm excited. I'm hoping maybe Freckles and I can uh, film, you know, live from Porkfest next year. That would be a great goal. <laughs> um, and thank you so much, Jeremy, for coming on today. We really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And you can also catch us on YouTube every Tuesday, DLive, Stitcher, Spotify, Anchor FM, Listen Notes, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find us on our newest collab, thefreedomscoop.com. Uh, make sure to tune into the next show because we're signing up with a brand new collaboration, which is a surprise. Uh, also, hop on over and check out some of the content from other great creators on Freedom Scoop. We can't do the show without you guys. I'm going to appreciate all of you. If you'd like to support the show, click on the link in the description below or go to anchor.fm click the support tab your small monthly donation helps us sustain future episodes again i'm brit you can find me on twitter at tweets by brit you can find me on parlor at carly's by brit and my always fabulous co-host is freckles you can find her on parlor and twitter at freckled liberty last but not least a very big thank you to our guest today jeremy kaufman from the free state project and library find him on twitter at jeremy kaufman Follow the Free State Project on Twitter at Free State NH, and you can also go to library on Twitter at LVRY 
io <laughs> thanks again for tuning in we can't wait to do this again next time bye